Covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is a type of bonding that occurs between two or more non-metals. This is different to ionic bonding, which requires a metal and a non-metal. So, chlorine is a non-metal. Here we have a chlorine atom. The atom has an incomplete outer shell, which means it's going to be reactive. Now we saw in ionic bonding that one way to fix this problem was to get a metal, for example sodium. Sodium would lose an electron and chlorine would gain this electron. Then we would produce two ions, both of them having a complete outer shell. However, what if we don't have a metal? What if we have two non-metal chlorine atoms? Would it still be possible to have a full outer shell? The answer is yes. And it's to do with sharing electrons. Now first of all, we're going to draw the outer shells only because that's where most of the chemistry happens. Now chlorine is in group 7, so it has 7 electrons in its outer shell. Next, we're going to draw the one on the left with crosses. This is important so that we know which atom the electrons are coming from when we draw our diagram. Now the rule with covalent bonding is you get what you give. For example, we can see that this atom on the left has 7 electrons. It needs one more to have 8 electrons in its outer shell to complete it. Since it needs one more, it has to share one electron. And the same applies to the chlorine atom on the right. It has 7 electrons, needs one more, so must share one. So, the chlorine atoms come together, and we get the following. So, let's count how many electrons each atom has now. Starting with the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And on the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So notice now that both atoms have 8 electrons. We now have a complete outer shell in both atoms and we have now created a chlorine molecule. This shared pair of electrons is referred to as a covalent bond. And covalent bonds are strong. The reason for this is because the nucleus of an atom is positively charged. And these positive nuclei are attracted to the shared pair of electrons, meaning that these atoms are going to be held together tightly. We'll talk more about the properties of covalent molecules later on. For now, we're going to practice drawing some more molecules. Now what we have here is a chlorine molecule, and this diagram is called a dot and cross diagram. However, we could also draw it as a displayed formula. So we have two chlorine atoms, and the line in the middle represents the covalent bond. One line for two electrons. Let's try another example. Let's see if we can draw oxygen. Remember, we're only drawing outer shells. So in O2, we're going to need two oxygen atoms. Now, how many electrons go on the outer shell of an oxygen atom? To know that, we have to look at the periodic table. These numbers are the group numbers, and they can tell you something very important. The group numbers tell you how many electrons are in the outer shell of an element. For example, oxygen is in group 6. That means it's going to have 6 electrons in its outer shell. So 6 here and 6 here. Again, notice that I've drawn them differently on purpose. So, these atoms have an incomplete outer shell. They only have six electrons. And the rule with covalent bonding is that you get what you give, meaning 
this atom has six electrons, it needs two more to have eight in its outer shell, and therefore it has to share two. And the same applies to the one on the right. So they're going to come together and form a covalent bond. So let's count how many electrons each atom has. Starting with the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And on the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect, so both of them have a complete outer shell and we've created an oxygen molecule. This is the dot and cross diagram. And this is the displayed formula. Notice this time that we have two lines instead of one. This is because there are two shared pairs of electrons. And each pair is represented by one line. Let's move on to one final example. We're going to draw ammonia. So looking at the periodic table, we can see that nitrogen is in group five. So it's going to have five electrons in its outer shell. And as for hydrogen, it has one electron in its outer shell. Okay, let's draw ammonia. So we're going to have one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. Since nitrogen is in group five, we're going to put five electrons in its outer shell. And hydrogen is going to have one electron in its outer shell. Okay, so how many will they share? Now hydrogen's electron is in the first shell. And remember, the first shell is the smallest. It can only hold a maximum of two electrons. Meaning that hydrogen already has one electron, so it needs one more to have two and have a full outer shell. So it has to share one. Nitrogen, on the other hand, has five. It needs three more to have eight, so it has to share three. And it's going to look like this. So if we count, the hydrogen on the left has one, two, the hydrogen at the bottom has one, two, and the hydrogen on the right has one, two. So they all have two electrons and therefore they have a full outer shell. As for nitrogen, it's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. And here we have the molecular formula, the dot and cross diagram, and the displayed formula on the right. Now we're going to talk about the structure and properties of covalent molecules. The first type of structure is known as simple molecular structures. And this includes molecules such as ammonia, oxygen, chlorine, and water, just to name a few. These substances exist as molecules floating around. Now, one of their properties is that they have low melting and boiling points, which means that at room temperature, they're mostly going to be gases or liquids. We won't have any solids at room temperature. This is because we have weak attractive forces, also known as intermolecular forces, between the molecules. Now, although these forces hold them together, they're quite weak, which means they can be easily broken without having to put in much energy. Also, they don't conduct electricity in any state. In order for a substance to conduct electricity, we need either free ions or free electrons, also known as delocalized electrons. Now, let's have a look. Now, in covalent bonding, we don't have any ions present anyway. Now, as for the electrons, they are found fixed on the atoms or used up in bonding. So, there are no free electrons and therefore these substances cannot conduct electricity no matter what state they're in. The next type of covalent structure is also known as giant covalent structures. And we'll use three examples. Diamond, which looks like this a pyramid made of only carbon atoms. Graphite, the substance that's found within pencil lead. This is made also of carbon, however, it looks slightly different. Here we have hexagonal rings made up in layers. 
And finally, silicon dioxide, in other words, sand. And this is also a giant structure made of silicon and oxygen atoms held together. So let's look at their properties. Number one, we can see here that we have only got strong covalent bonds. There's hardly any weak intermolecular forces. So because there's only strong covalent bonds, that means giant covalent molecules will have high melting and boiling points. If you think about it, at room temperature, diamond, graphite and sand are solids. They're not gases or liquids. Also, they don't conduct electricity. And once again, we need ions or free electrons. We don't have ions in covalent bonding. And also, we don't have free electrons either, except for graphite. Graphite is the only giant covalent structure that has free or delocalized electrons floating between the layers of hexagonal rings. OK, let's summarize the differences between simple molecular and giant covalent structures. The first difference is melting point. Simple molecular substances have low melting and boiling points. This is because they have weak intermolecular forces, which are easily broken. As for giant covalent substances, they have high melting and boiling points because they only have strong covalent bonds, which require a lot of energy to break. One thing in common is that they do not conduct electricity. This is because there are no free electrons, except for graphite. Graphite has delocalized electrons between the layers and as a result, graphite can conduct electricity. So in this video, we've summarized how to draw covalent molecules and also compared the differences between the two main covalent structures. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.